Welcome back. All right, we are going to cover a projection operator and leakage modification for the high order case. Um, motivation for projection operator and leakage modification, I'm gonna mention up front, we covered this motivation in the previous videos uh, on projection operator and leakage modification. If you haven't watched projection and leakage modification, please watch the previous videos on the playlist because high order case, how we use these pretty much the same with some little tweaks that I'm going to mention. So we use these tools when we cannot arrive v dot less than equal to zero. First, I will start by illustrating this. We have the same system, structured uncertainty. Um, if you remember, this was our nominal control signal. This was our adaptive control signal. There is a reason we combined, we included u, n, to the uh, basis function because of the uh, treatment because of this lambda, unknown lambda. Um, you can watch the uh, previous vi two videos about that. And then basically this was our weight update law, gamma was positive. This was Lyapunov equation uh, that produces a po unique positive definite solution P for a given positive definite R. This was the reference model capturing our ideal performance and to refresh your memories, these were the structures. I am not going to redrive everything. Look at the previous two, two videos. I would like to focus on projection operator and dental leakage modification. Now, we had a proof, we had a nice proof of this algorithm, uh, which was coming from the foundations of stability analysis, 21.11 21 uh, timestamp. Now, Let's do something different and let's say we are dealing with time varying uncertainties. In this case, if you remember uh, MRAC video, for the case when uh, uncertainty is constant, we only had this term. But when it is time varying, basically when you take the time derivative of this guy, w hat dot minus w dot, because of this w dot, you are going to have this term. So, well, certainly we cannot say that this is less than or equal to zero. It is not. This term can be positive. This is a sign indefinite term. It can be anything. This is one of the case that we cannot write this is less than or equal to zero. So if we cannot write, then we refer to, we need to use either projection operator and leakage modification. I highlighted their key distinctions in the previous videos. I am going to repeat here as a, to, as a refresher. Um, so projection operator, first of all, the definition. The definition, don't get scared, okay, so don't get scared. The definition nicely generalizes to this high order case. Previously, when we used projection operator, we were looking, this, this, this portion was E multiplied by X. This was one by one and we define projection operator easily. In this case, this is an S by M matrix. I don't want to write everywhere theta E transpose PB. I am going to define matrix M that depends on this. And this projection part can be written as, you know, IJ elements of this S by M matrix. In other words, what I'm trying to say, right, m11, m12, all the way up to m1, m goes like this. I am looking at this m matrices, each element. And basically, you are going to do projection to each element of this m matrix. For example, starting from the, you know, looking at the ij element, for this ij element, you need to know Right, so an upper bound of the um, uncertain weight and the lower bound of the uncertain weight. If you compare this with the, pre with the definition of the projection operator in the previous video, it is identical. I am just applying the definition of the projection operator from the previous video with for uh, to each element of M, M, I, J. So for IJ element, basically this divided by epsilon, this is the uh, projection constant. And if this condition is met, 
and this is zero, then use this. If W estimate IJ hat is less than the minimum IJ plus the epsilon and MJ, MIJ is less than zero, this is basically you are going to hit the lower limit of the uh, saturation or the projection. Then subtract this, multiply it by this in order to turn back to the region. So um, again, I am applying the previous projection uh, operator's definition to each element of M, of this S by M matrix. It will be boring to code, right? Code will be, you know, you can define some for loop, but slightly longer. But, you know, I already posted a projection operator example in MATLAB. Code will be the same, just you need to do for each element of W hat of this M. Once you do that, um, if you remember the projection property, once again, for the projection of previous projection operator video, it nicely generalizes to the this matrix case, this holds. This is a, you know, if you to refresh, if you want, you can stop the video, go to the projection operator's previous video, um, compare it with this one. It is just a version, a, a generalized version that holds for uh, uh, matrix case. The reason is that, so if each element satisfies the projection operator for the scalar case, then this holds for each element that this basically directly follows. All right, so I would like to discuss briefly uh, the uh, stability of the stability of the adaptive control closed loop system when we have projection operator. Um, it follows from from foundations of stability analysis video, but after applying some tricks. So I am going to show these tricks here and then refer you to the foundations of stability analysis video more precisely this timestamp of this video. All right, with projection operator, we have this error dynamics and we have this W hat dot dynamics. Um, you can also write W tilde dot, dot dynamics. In this case, you are going to subtract W dot because W tilde was W hat minus W. Since we are dealing with a time varying uncertainty, this guy will pop up. But I am writing W hat dot, so I don't want to confuse you. That's why I wanted to explain this point. So if you start with this Lyapunov uh, equation, right in this basically video, first I take the time derivative of the first term and the second term. So the time derivative of the first term is quite a spatial case of the time derivative of the first term here. I tried to use the same notation. So you are going to arrive these two terms. However, time derivative of this basically, you know, if we take the time derivative, it is basically two gamma inverse trace W tilde directly writing from here. This W hat dot, this guy, minus W dot. This prosh dot is basically everything inside. I just wanted to make notation less heavy. So this part is basically the this part here. I just uh, didn't want to write. All right, now combining these two terms using the trace property also explained in this video, you can combine these two terms into this form. Now, thanks to the projection pro, uh, projection property, right? It was saying this part is less than or equal to zero, but since this is diagonal uh, matter positive definite matrix, you know this less than or equal to zero term multiplied by this also makes it less than or equal to zero such that in from moving from here to here, we can just ignore this portion. What we end up having is this term and this term. Now, once again, I am doing one of the biggest tricks in control. I am adding zero or adding this term and subtracting this term. Now, basically, these are the nice two terms that you are going to see on the 26.20 timestamp of this video. I am going to combine these two into one. Note that these are bounded terms. 
So um, right now, since we are using projection of property, you know, um, W tilde W hat minus W, I forgot to mention, I should write it here uh, as a reminder, right? W tilde is W hat minus W. W is time varying, but assumptions, this is a bounded signal and W dot is also bounded. So this is a time varying signal, but W and its time derivative needs to be bounded. So uh, think about if it is not bounded, then this can be problematic. And generally, uh, w that is also bounded. There are ways actually to relax, you know, W time derivative of W may be infinity. Uh, actually, this was the topic of my PhD dissertation, derivative free adaptive control. Its book will be on shelves probably within a couple of months. And when this happens, uh, I will let you know. Um, anyway, there is, it is also, the, we, we can uh, mention the boundedness of W dot, but W needs to be bounded because no one can deal with infinite uncertainty. I forgot to mention this, so I just wanted to write here to explain uh, more in detail. You know. All right, so turning back to my red pen. Um, now, group the last two terms as this. Note that this term is bounded. Let's say bounded by some, you know, some, you know, we are basically, uh, there exists an upper bound because uh, we are following the similar to the 26.20 of this video. Um, so this is bounded and follow 26.20 from the foundations of stability analysis video to achieve the boundedness. It will be the, exactly the same steps. So again, I on, only wanted to show the trick that you need basically when you use this projection property. After that, after you add and subtract these two terms, rest will follow directly. That's the purpose why I made this video first, so, such that every video that, that I upload afterwards, I can refer to it. All right, sigma modification and E modification. Sigma modification is simpler and basically very, very similar, actually, you know, quite similar to the leakage, the one, its version in the leakage modification video. You just had this. And it's proof of this sigma modification directly follow from, from this foundation of stability analysis video without any tricks. Um, and basically go to that video from the beginning set. There is a term like epsilon set it to zero and basically proof is here, boundedness proof. I also didn't cover the proof of E modification, but I just wanted to mention because for some people it is a important. In my personal experience, I kind of um, like it, but I prefer sigma modification. This is purely personal reasons. Uh, both sigma modification and in modification are great tools. You can ex again don't you know explore yourself. Go to the code, and you can find its proof in several places, and including my PhD dissertation. Um, uh, if you are interested in modification, let me know. Um, all right. So um, as this being said, we covered um, projection operator. Uh, versus leakage modification. Both of them are E sigma and E are leakage modifications. This is this has a constant gain sigma positive. Here this error dependent such that you know when error approaches the zero this uh, gain becomes less and less effective such that you can kind of recover the ideal you know adaptation performance but if if error approaches the zero um and um i mean this is like um not exactly cover the ideal performance but getting close to it for some time time instance sometimes people choose this he as the euclidean norm of error sometimes b transpose pe um again you can explore yourselves but to make the long story short these are the leakage terms and you directly insert them and you achieve boundedness. Unlike projection operator, uh, right? You don't need to know 
here you have a unknown w for for unknown w's each i jade you need to code some upper uh, maximum value for that i j value and minimum value well this is i mentioned this in the projection operator video uh, if you really don't know them just use some large value um, and uh, this won't cause conservatism so it is not a big deal in robust control to achieve or fixed gain control to achieve a good perf performance you need to know uncertainty bounds precisely this is not the case in projection operator again code yourself choose them to be one choose them to be 100 um, uh, but uh, projection needs to keep the weights bonded so don't make it arbitrarily large i would say um, the beautiful part about uh, projection operator, if uh, in this case um, your uh, uncertainty, time varying uncertainty approaches to be a constant, then you are going to recover, exactly recover the ideal adaptive asymptotic stability of the error dynamics. Once you use sigma modification, leakage type 1, this is not possible, E modification, this is possible for some time instance, although this is not. This won't be identically equivalent to the um, asymptotic stability of the error dynamics. So, um, good size or bad size, I will say. Cons and pros. Uh, projection operator. Yes, you all you you need still need to put some W max W in, but you can recover that you know as an error as an asymptotic stability of the error when error goes to zero. Sigma and E, you don't use W max or min, but you will never get um, ideal closer performance in the sense you get uh, W is constant. All right, um, take care.